Number 24, suppose you are using total internal reflection to make an efficient corner reflector. If there is air outside and the incident angle is 45 degrees, what must be the minimum index of refraction of the material from which the reflector is made? So check out, this is all about critical angle. Check out number 20. All right, I went through how to think through uh, critical angle. Anytime you're seeing total internal reflection, you want to think about critical angle. In other words, total internal reflection occurs when the refracted ray is refracted to 90 degrees. All right, again, check out number 20. So I'm going to use the formula here that we developed there. So it says that the critical angle here is going to be equal to the inverse sine of the, uh, it's N2 over N1, right? But N2 is really the index of refraction of the refracted ray divided then by the index of refraction for the incident ray. All right. Now, uh, this th this critical angle is known as the incident angle, okay, in which creates total internal reflection. Again, number 20 will explain it. So this angle here is 45 degrees. All right. The, it says incident angle 45. This is the critical angle. All right. Because this is the angle giving rise to the total internal reflection. That's then going to be equal to sine, the inverse sine that is, of the refracted ray. Now the refracted ray is the um, is the index of refraction of then the uh, part that is experiencing that total internal reflection. So the other way you can remember it, or just kind of simply memorize this, is that n sub r, or the index of refraction of the refracted ray, must be less than the in, uh, the index of refraction of the incident ray. Okay. So they're talking about air being outside. Air has basically the lowest, except for a vacuum, right? It has the lowest uh, index of refraction. So that's probably going to be on the top, okay? And then, uh, you know, very close to one, right? But my, they're asking me then for the incident, right? They're asking me the index of refraction um, for the incident angle. So that's what I'm solving for here, n sub i. So now all we have to do is kind of do a little, you know, rejigging, so to speak, of this problem, of this equation. So I got to get rid of the inverse sign. So that means I have to take the sign of both sides, okay? So I got to take the sine of 45, and that will then equal the sine, whoops, of this thing, sine cancels. So now you're left with sine of 45, right? You can plug that into your calculator if you want, make sure you're in degree mode. Okay, that's 0 0.707. And that's then going to be equal to 1 over n sub i. So simply now cross these two. And there you go. All right. And this is then going to be equal to 1 divided by then that value. And this is 1.414, I guess. And sig figs, I guess 1.41. You know, something like that. That is now the index of refraction. Okay. And like I said, check out number 20. It will make sense. Take care.